Today, we're making a meadow foam traditional mead. And I gotta tell you, this honey tastes weird. If you've never tried meadow foam blossom honey, I think you should go out and buy some. You probably will have to be like me and buy it online because not a lot of local places have it. This is a very interesting honey that most people tote tastes like cotton candy, like um, uh, sometimes, uh, what am I thinking of, like icing? It's got a weird, very unique sugary kind of taste, which is honey, of course. So I'll tell you kind of what I'm getting from it. I get this, I mean, to me it tastes like like cotton candy. It tastes like um, flavored, a, a mixture between cotton candy and birthday cake icing. Flavored uh, sugar, essentially. It's got some, um, some very bright, very, very bright floral notes. And to me, um, I get like a slight hint of rose after I inhale a little bit after trying some. Yeah, this stuff's super, super good and super interesting. And I bet it'll make a great mead. So we're gonna make a mead out of it today. I have exactly 12 ounces of Meadow Foam Blossom Honey. Now that's obviously not enough to make a big mead. We're gonna be making a half of a gallon of mead today. I have sanitized everything. So this is my star sand water, all that stuff. I got all my tools, things for stirring, hydrometer, all that stuff. Um, I've sanitized this stuff as well. We are using this recipe right there. You see on the screen, it's a Meadow Foam Blossom Traditional. Uh, it is 12 ounces of Meadow Foam Blossom honey, about a third, or almost a half a gallon of water, spring water, nice clean water. And uh, I'm gonna be using two grams of Lauvin QA23. I really only need one gram, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in two grams. I'll seal the packet, reuse it. So let's go ahead and make this thing. Most of you have probably seen mead being made. Essentially, we just mix our ingredients together. We throw in our yeast, and specifically with this, while I'm letting these, uh, while I'm mixing stuff up, I'm gonna rehydrate my yeast. So let me go ahead and do that. Here are my yeast rehydrating, two grams of them. I put a little bit of water into here. Basically, they're just waking up. I've picked the Lavin QA23 because in my opinion, it does a great job with traditional meads in retaining honey character while not fermenting, fermenting so fast that it blows off a lot of the floral notes. And specifically with this, I wanna retain the, uh, not necessarily the sweetness, but the floral side. So yes, this yeast will chew through all the sugar, but it will chew through it slower from, again, my experience. Let's mix in some more ingredients. Our starting gravity is 1.060, which means that we are roughly about an eight point, I wanna say a 7.8% ABV-ish um, mead. Now I'll put the real thing up here so you can see that's just my head math kind of guessing. So um, now we're gonna put this into here. That's assuming that it ferments through everything, of course. We are ready to let it start fermenting. It's only half a gallon, so I'm going to put my airlock and everything on that I have here. Uh, if you wanna buy the honey that I'm using today, I'll put a link down in the description so you can find it and purchase it if you want, of course. So we'll see how this works. The good news is I'd still have, uh, I bought two 12 ounce containers of this meadow foam. So if after the primary, the meadow foam flavor is gone, if the honey is, totally decimated, um, I can always stabilize and back sweeten with a little, it a little bit so we get a stronger meadow foam taste. But let's see how this turns out. And we're back with the meadow foam traditional. It is done fermenting. It has been a grand total of 16 days. Now, I believe it finished around day 12, day 13, and then it started to clear. Um, and I know it's for sure done because I've just taken a gravity reading and our gravity reading is 1.000, we started at 1.060, now we're at 1.000. So we're looking at something like, oh, I'm always bad at this math part, but something like a 7.8% possibly, 7.9 maybe, 
um, percent mead. So we, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and do a taste test and see how it is after the primary and then we're gonna go ahead and put it into a new container and decide what to do next. All right, here's our traditional mead, traditional Metapo meme, me, meme. I'm really excited for uh, this one because I'm curious to see how Metapoam works. Ooh, the nose has kept a lot of the floral notes. Yeah, I still get the like synthetic, not synthetic sugar, but like the, the um, cotton candy sugar smell, the marshmallow sugar smell. Ooh, it's got a little, um, obviously, a lot of the sweetness is gone. Most of the sweetness is gone. It's retained the um, the very uh, bright, like sugary aroma, which then turns into taste. Very floral. Um, it reminds me of an alpha alpha blossom honey, like quite a bit, because it ha has such a uh, very bright floral taste. It also has some rose, hint of rose to me. Definitely a little bit dry, of course, because it went dry. Um, yeah, I, this is, I mean, it's pretty good for it being dry and young. It's still got some yeasty taste to it, so that's kind of expected with a young mead. You don't get a really young mead that's like fantastic generally. It sometimes has some problems. Most of the time has problems. Yeah, I, I really get a lot of that, um, that, uh, I keep saying cotton candy. It is cotton candy tasting. It's also marshmallow, mesh, mar marshmallow e tasting what a word and um so i think that's that's interesting so let's see what happens maybe if i were to back sweeten some with the meadow foam traditional or meadow foam honey um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rack this into a new container and then we're gonna let it age for a little while longer i am going to in about probably two weeks add um, some potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are two stabilizers, a stabilizer and a preservative, which will help halt any possible fermentation, at which point we can put in metafoam honey without worrying about any backs, or without worrying about any re-fermentation. Because we don't want any more, any more re-fermentation on new honey we, if we want to retain the characters of it. Let me rack this over. All right, I moved it over. It is currently in this half gallon. Uh, carboy and it has some headspace on it. I'm not planning to long-term age this in here It's probably gonna be bottle aged because of space for me So um, I'm okay with leaving it like this for two weeks. Of course long term. I wouldn't do that Let me go ahead and leave this. We'll put some potassium sorbate in Do all the stuff to back sweeten it and make this an even better meadow foam traditional meat And we're back with the Meadow Foam Traditional. We are now three months into this mead's life. And um, on a normal mead basis, I would take and actually let this continue to age in this. But this has some headspace on it and I don't wanna go any further. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna taste test it real fast, see if anything's changed. And then we're gonna add some more Meadow Foam Blossom Honey to back sweeten. Ooh, yeah, that, it's definitely dry. Um, the, the honey character is preserved, which is nice. I do believe that the yeast did a good job of keeping that character without blowing off the important parts of it. I am getting um, that semi, well, I hate saying the semi-fake sugar taste, that, that marshmallow that we talked about before. It's like this really interesting mix between an, a um, sweet or a, a bright sweetness and then this like mellow sweetness, which uh, that seems a little silly to say, but it's not like, it doesn't taste like cotton candy. I'll put it that way. Anyways, I wanna go ahead now and back sweeten this. We did stabilize it, as you saw before. Starting gravity was 1060. Final gravity is 1.000. So now let's go ahead and back sweeten with as much honey as we need to get this to be the sweetness level that we desire. Okay, so in grand total, I added two ounces of this Meadow Foam Honey. Let me tell you what I'm tasting. So I partially stirred up the lees of this, meaning that I'm getting a little yeasty taste that wasn't there before, because there was stuff at the bottom that I didn't rack off. Um, this is definitely pronounced, the, um, that caramelized, not caramelized, that 
um, bright cotton candy-esque sugar that I was missing before. And I really love the floral side from this meadow foam. It is a fantastic, very kind of weird honey, but fantastic honey. We're really not too sweet, which is nice. Um, let me take a gravity reading to tell you where it's at currently. So we've changed the gravity from 1.000 to now 1.010, giving it about a, a whole point. So um, that's a decent increase, not too much, it's not too sweet. Um, I think it's at a great level. So, like I said earlier, this is gonna be bottled here soon. We need to let it set for 24 hours to make sure there's no uh, fermentation again. Also to let some of this stuff settle because it definitely got a little murkier. I don't really care about it, about it being super hazy, but that yeast and stuff I stirred up, I don't want to be in the mead. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here. So you can do this recipe with any other kind of honey. A traditional mead is just a specific type of honey, water, and your yeast. This is just a fantastic version with uh, meadow foam. So let me go ahead now and put this away. We'll come back and bottle it and take care of all those things. All right, it's been 24 hours, haven't seen any activity. Time to bottle. Let's do it. So one thing I wanna say as a bottling this, this mead in its current state, still pretty young. I think it has a lot of potential to be really good. The Meadow Foam Blossom Honey is unique and it's um, actually really flavorful. And I think that that will be a good characteristic to mellow out over time or a good jumping off point for this to be great in a couple months, if not a year or so. So of course I'm gonna let these things age, but in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy a glass of it. All right, and that's that. In grand total, I got out of this half gallon, again, this is a small recipe, I got two beer bottles, in a wine bottle. Now, you, you can of course make this bigger. You could take my recipe and multiply it by however many you wanna make. So um, half gallon times four to make two gallons and so on and so forth. But this is a very interesting meat and I would highly recommend if you are interested in trying a odd varietal of honey that's gonna produce a, a, a very unique um, honey or very unique mead, try meadow foam. Meadow foam is a little bit hard to get a hold of, but you can get it online. And I'll actually put a link down to the meadow foam that I bought down in the description. So I normally put something like this label wise onto my meads because ultimately I want the mead to be unique in that way too. And it's easy for me when I'm pulling bottles down to know what I'm drinking. So um, I will put something like that on this eventually when I print those out. Anyways, this has been a meadow foam, traditional mead. There's a bunch of traditional meads. You can do this with any type of honey. And um, I just think meadow foam is really very fascinating. So I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video or want to just support the channel. That's an easy way to do it. Another way you can do it is by going and supporting me on Patreon. You can also become a YouTube member and do those things. But anyways, I'm thankful for your time. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the future with another video. So with that, check the recipe below.